Future director and screenwriter Oliver Stone dropped out of college to go fight in the Vietnam War, and he quickly discovered that the romanticized fantasy of war that he had in his head was very, very different from the reality. Years later, he turned his experiences into the 1986 film Platoon, starring Charlie Sheen, John Berenger, and Willem Dafoe. And he claimed that Platoon had the distinction of being the first film to portray the Vietnam War from the point of view of the men who fought it, from the point of view of the ground troops. And whether or not this is actually true, in an era where war was glorified and romanticized with macho fighting men like Rambo, it's very, very clear that this film took a very different approach to war and specifically this very controversial war. And at number 86 on AFI's Top 100 Greatest Films list, this is the film with which we are going to revive this particular reviewing series. So let's take a look at Platoon and find out what's all the fuss about. Do you follow me? Uh, not not the Why is the run go? Serious. Nobody cares about the new guys. They don't even want to know your name. The unwritten rule is a new guy's life isn't worth as much because he hasn't put his time in yet. And they say if you're going to get killed in the Nam, it's better to get it in the first few weeks. The logic being, you don't suffer that much. If you're lucky, you get to stay in the perimeter at night. And then you pull a three-hour guard shift. So maybe you sleep three, four hours a night, but you don't really sleep. What's All the Fuss About is a movie reviewing series in which I look at the 123 films that appear on both top 100 greatest films list that the American Film Institute put out, one in 1998 and one in 2007, and try to see if I can figure out what all the fuss is about. And in Oliver Stone's war film Platoon, it's clear that he wanted to create as visceral an experience as possible. He wanted his audience to experience what he experienced. And watching this film, you really do feel what it must be like to fight in a war like that. The heat, the tension, the sheer exhaustion, the sheer helplessness. You feel every bit of it. In fact, Stone actually brought his actors to the Philippines and put them through basic training. He put them through what soldiers would have gone through in Vietnam, so that when it finally came time to shoot, they didn't have to act exhausted, they really were exhausted. And their performances definitely give us that rawness that Oliver Stone is going for in this film. Charlie Sheen plays Chris Taylor, who is the autobiographical Oliver Stone character, the college student who dropped out to fight in a war because he believed in the romanticism of the war. And through his character, who is essentially the everyman of this movie, we get to see what the war was like in the most straightforward way possible. One of the things I really appreciate about this film is that everything in it is purposeful. There's no extraneous is fluff, there's nothing there that's just there to shock or to titillate or to make the audience feel better. It all serves the same purpose. Everything in this film is absolutely necessary toward its final end, to give us the most honest, raw, and visceral experience of this war and the people who fought in it. Now, in this film, Chris Taylor is subject to two authority figures. Tom Berenger plays Staff Sergeant Barnes, who is the fighter of the group. He has clearly seen combat, he has fought and won, and he has absolutely no scruples when it comes to defeating the enemy, even if he sees the enemy in one of his own men. The antithesis to this character is Sergeant Elias, played by Willem Dafoe, who, in spite of everything that he's seen and everything that he's experienced, still has an ironclad grip on his morals. And much of the film involves watching these two authority figures go up against each other, and watching the men have their loyalty torn between them, and watching Chris Taylor himself have to figure out which of these two figures he's going to follow. As you can imagine, the tension increases, and you see these soldiers do things that they would not otherwise do. When we hear about a lot of the atrocities that were committed during the Vietnam War, it's kind of hard to get a real context for them, but this movie gives us that context. It really helps us to understand why these men might have done the things that they did while also not condoning those things that they did. So what's all the fuss about? There are a lot of war films on this list because war is one of those subjects that's really easy to find compelling stories to tell about and make movies about. And in order to understand what the fuss is about with this particular war film, I think we have to go back to the time when it was released. Understand that in the late 80s, the war in Vietnam had only just ended a little more than a decade ago, and it 
it was still fresh in a lot of people's minds. And it really was the first film to take a real hard look at the people who fought in that war. In fact, it's kind of like a lot of the movies that are coming out today that look at events that really only happened a few years ago and look at the people who were involved in them. You know, movies like Spotlight and Zero Dark Thirty and a lot of those movies that are talking about things that it feels like just happened. Now, like I said at the beginning of this review, films of this era tended to romanticize war. They tended to glorify it and glorify these heroic fighting men that were played by people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. But there is absolutely no romanticizing of this war. There is no glory to be found. In fact, from the very first scene, you can tell what a hell this is. You can tell that this is not going to be a romanticism of war. This is not going to be the hero's journey or a heroic story of any kind. This is going to be a hard movie to watch. Everything in this film is very raw and very real, and when you think about the Vietnam War and the effect that it had both with the people who fought in it and with the people who were at home watching it, anything else would seem like a cop-out. There is no way they could make an honest picture glorifying this war and have it be any kind of successful. And the fact that our main protagonist is someone who joined primarily because of the romanticization of war, probably from a lot of the war movies that came out during that time period, really speaks to that message. And I feel like Oliver Stone in particular really wants us to experience what he experienced. I'm sure he experienced that same sort of disillusionment that Chris Taylor did, and he wants to make sure that the audience feels it as well. And because we are being made to feel what the characters are feeling, we are better able to understand a lot of the things that went on there. It's one thing to hear Vietnam veterans talk about the war, but it's much, much different to actually experience a lot of it in the way that they did from the point of view of the people who actually fought in it. And we had the perspective of Oliver Stone, who actually did. And I think that as the population of Vietnam veterans grows older and older, it's more and more important to watch films like this to really truly understand the atrocities that took place during this war. And especially for those of us who lived after the era of Vietnam, it's very, very important that these periods of history don't just become tick marks on the timeline of history. It's important that we understand what went on. More than anything, we need an understanding of the people who fought and lived during that time. And this movie, written and directed by someone who did, gives us that. It is a difficult film to watch. I will not deny that it's a difficult film to watch, but it's meant to be, and it needs to be. This is a film that I really think that even if you don't like war films, even if you don't feel particularly inclined to watch this film, watch this film. It's really, really an important one to watch. And in fact, on the Worth Beater, I am giving this one an ultimate recommendation. So now moving forward with the What's All the Fuss About series, we will look at one of the Lost 23, one of the 23 films that was dropped from the original list. Originally number 86 on the top 100 list, Mutiny on the Bounty. See you then.